Hey, howdy guys, Connor McCaskill here, and today I am joined by Jonathan Masters. Hey guys, Jonathan here. Connor asked me to join him on a YouTube collab today to show you guys how we color grade our Fujifilm F-Log footage. I'm gonna be grading in DaVinci Resolve, Connor's in Premiere. I hope you guys enjoy it. Take it away, Connor. Yeah, so today we're gonna to be, as Jonathan said, going through how we grade Fujifilm F-Log. I hope you guys get a lot out of it. If you haven't heard of Jonathan, he actually just started his YouTube channel, so definitely make sure to go check him out. I'll leave links down below in the description. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and switch over to Jonathan's side in California, where he's going to show you how he grades F-Log in DaVinci Resolve. All right, let's get started. So I've got DaVinci Resolve pulled up here. We're gonna go over into the color tab. And the first thing I usually do is add a couple of nodes. These are just like layers in Photoshop. And the next thing I usually do is add a color space transform node. The way this works is you're just telling the computer what camera you shot with, and it's gonna figure out the rest. So we're gonna go in here to the color space, and I know that Fujifilm is in Rec 2020 when you're shooting an F-Log. And then we're gonna go down to the input gamma, and we're gonna select Fujifilm F-Log right here. And you see it kind of blows out, which that's not what we want. And all you have to do is click this luminance mapping and there you go, back to normal. And we're gonna do the same thing with the saturation mapping. And you can pretty much grade right off of that. I think it's a great base point for a starting grade, but I really like to use Film Convert. And so I'm gonna add that to this final note here and we're gonna Shift F so I can bring this up into full screen more. And we're gonna turn the grain all the way down just cause I like to save that to the end if I'm going to add it. And then I generally like to put this at like 50% because when I first add film convert, I notice it's a little bit too much. And then you're gonna make sure you select your camera profile. So we're gonna go to Fujifilm X-T3. And then since we're not grading on top of the log image, we've already converted it to like Rec. 709. I'm gonna go ahead and select Eterna because that's the closest thing. We're gonna hit apply. And you see that looks pretty good but I want to select a different film stock because I don't really like this film stock. So we're going to go through and look at a couple of different ones of these. And usually I will go down to, I like this FJ H400 Pro. Um, it just looks like a really nice filmic look right out of the box. And you can just grade off of this right here. You go ahead and hit your shadows, change your midtone level a little bit, bring up the highlights. And that's all you really have to do. You can add some saturation if you want. Let's look at that full screen. So now we're done with that one. We're gonna go to the next clip. Same type of thing. We're gonna add a couple of these nodes, color space transform. We're gonna do film convert and same, same thing again. We're gonna go rec 2020, F log, wherever that is, there it is. Tone mapping, luminance mapping, saturation mapping. We're already halfway there. Now bring that down to half. And you guys can do this. This is all however you guys want. I just think that it's a little bit too much for my personal taste. Select Fujifilm, XT3, Eterna, and you can select any one of these you want. You can even play around with adding, like if you wanna do Aria Alexa, you can see what that one looks like. That looks great. Okay, we're just gonna leave it. Um, let's change the film stock. We're gonna go to, let's try that Fuji one again. Again, amazing. Um, you can't beat the skin tones of Fuji, but when you add in something like Film Convert, um, it's just gonna give you that really filmic style and look to your footage. I think that about does it for me and how I grade. Uh, it's pretty simple and straightforward. It works on just about everything. One last thing to note is that you can do the same thing in Resolve without the Color Space Transform node. You can use just the provided Fujifilm LUTs. You can use their Eterna or their Eterna Wide Dynamic Range, and you get pretty much the same result. I just prefer to do that that way. Alrighty guys, so I hope you enjoyed Jonathan's little bit about DaVinci Resolve. Hope you found that useful, but now let's go ahead and dive into how I grade in Premiere Pro when dealing with F-Log footage. So let's just jump right into it. So I went ahead and opened up Premiere and have a few files loaded up for you guys in the color workspace. So if you don't know how to get to that at the top, you start off in editing typically and you just click on color and boom, you're in the color workspace. It's pretty simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this first clip that I have here of my friend, Cameron Mackey. If you haven't seen the video that we did with this, which is really cool, we compared the X-T3 to the GFX100, which is just dumb. Uh, it'll be linked somewhere. But anyways, so I had a lot of people asking me how I graded specifically in this video. And honestly, I used Jonathan's suggestion. So this is kind of Jonathan's way of grading. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my clip 
and I'm gonna go up to the top right here where it says input LUT. Now, what I'm using are Fujifilm's provided LUTs. You can download them from Fujifilm uh, directly. I'll have a link to that as well in the description so that you guys can find it. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on the input LUT and then select browse. And in browse, you're going to find the folder that you just downloaded. Fujifilm makes it really easy. You're gonna find the X-T3, and then you are presented with three options. You have wide dynamic range, you have Eterna, and you have F-Log. So for this, I actually just use their regular F-Log. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. Now, as you'll see, it's still pretty flat, um, but that's okay. All you're gonna do is go over to your color wheels. This is how I do it. And I went ahead and grabbed my shadows, and I'm gonna drag my shadows down and I'm using my waveform here to kind of see it. Now I like my shadows to be roughly at six on my Lumetri. It doesn't have an actual number, but I just kind of roughly get it at six. I like the shadows to be slightly raised. That's just personal preference. And then I also am going to, because it was a bright sunny day, bring up my highlights to where they actually were on the day. Maybe bring down my midtones just a smidgen. And it's already starting to look really good. F-Log just, it grades really easily, which is something that I, I really like about my X-T3. But let's go ahead and go into the creative tab. This is where you can kind of add a little bit extra. You have the faded film slider. A lot of people like that. That just lifts up the shadows, uh, which I kind of already have them lifted, so I'm not gonna mess with that. You can add a little bit of vibrance to bring back some of the color so that it's not as flat as it was, or if you like the flatness, you can leave it alone. This is where you get to be creative. That is why they call it the creative tab. And then if you have a secondary look that you wanna add that you've downloaded online, let's say I wanna add buyer's 11 look for some reason. It's a little too much. Maybe something like this, say 25%. And it looks really nice. Um, that is just a quick little grade that I did in literally, I don't know, two, three, four minutes, something like that. And it looks fantastic. Now let's go ahead and jump over to the other one. I'll go ahead and show you guys the other two corrective LUTs that Fujifilm provides. So we'll go back to browse go over here. So we already did the standard F-Log. Let's go ahead and try out, let's say the Eterna one. Eterna looks really good. Typically with Eterna, as you can see, you just apply it and it just looks good out the gate. You almost don't have to do anything, but I'm going to just a little bit because I can see on my waveforms that I kind of want to bring down my shadows just a little bit. Maybe, maybe something like that. And then maybe bring up my highlights just a bit more. This is a little video that I made on Instagram. If you're curious to see it, I'll link that below. And there you go. I think that that looks really nice. It's just a simple grade. Again, that one probably took me 30 seconds. And lastly, I'll just go over to this one. This is also from the video that I did with Cam. He did this nice little hat flip that I taught him. And we'll go over here. I actually did not apply the wide dynamic range to this video, but let's just do it right now. and. See how it looks. Boom. Wow. Actually, it looks great. <laughs> it looks really, really good uh, right out the gate. I think that the shadows look good. I might bring up my highlights just a bit because I like, I don't know, I like it to be a little brighter, a little, a little cheerier. That looks really good. Uh, I wouldn't add too much, maybe a little bit of vibrance because his jean jacket was looking a little more faded than it actually was, oops, in reality. So we're gonna fix that. It might be slightly green, so I'm just gonna add two magenta. And there you go, it looks really nice. Again, it didn't take me any time at all. And that's kind of the point that Jonathan and I were wanting to display. We were trying to show that it doesn't take any time really to grade F-Log footage once you kind of know the tips and tricks on what to do. So I hope that that was useful to you guys and that you feel inspired to go try and shoot F-Log for yourselves. Dude, Jonathan, thanks so much for coming on the channel and showing how you grade Fujifilm F-Log footage in DaVinci Resolve. I think that people are gonna find it really useful. Anytime, Connor. And guys, I just want you to remember that no amount of grading is gonna make your footage look better than it started out as. So try your best to dial in your settings, use good lighting, use good camera technique, and your shots will look a thousand times better. Yeah, guys, I absolutely agree with what Jonathan said. If your footage doesn't look good to start with, then no amount of color grading is going to make that look 
better, or at least not that much better. But once you have your footage dialed in and looking real nice, color grading is a great way to really bring out your creativity and really form a look that is your personality and your look entirely, which I think is super important. Now, Jonathan, interestingly enough, has actually had hands on with the Fujifilm X-T4, which I'm crazy jealous about. But Jonathan, do you think, I think I know, but do you think that the Fujifilm X-T4 is going to grade the same as the X-T3? Well, I don't think, I know. It is the same sensor and same processor, so the workflow is entirely the same. I've had hands-on with the camera, like Connor said. Um, I actually was able to assist in a friend of mine, Sean Boyd. Shout out Sean Boyd, you can check out his YouTube channel as well. We got our hands on a Fujifilm X-T4 uh, before launch, and we were able to create something for Fujifilm that's actually now live on uh, Fujifilm USA on their YouTube channel. And that was all shot on the X-T4 and graded with similar methods as we used here. Awesome. Well, again, Jonathan, thanks so much for coming on. And also, again, make sure you guys go check him out and go subscribe to his brand new YouTube channel. It's like a little baby infant channel, but we're going to make it huge and fantastic and wonderful. So again, go support him. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and you found it useful. If you did, make sure to drop me a like. And as always, thanks for hanging. Mm -hmm.